So we're in the middle of week five. It's day two and it's the second match of the day. The Ding taking on X Hope. The Ding uh, playing for the first time yesterday. We saw him for the first time. Uh, didn't seem to be on the best of form, but we should never judge a player from one match cast by one person uh, in the middle of a highly pressurised situation as the league has closed right up. There's one team with three wins, that's Liquid. One team with six wins, that's VK. And everybody else is on four or five. And with every pair of positions in the league making a big difference, uh, the bottom two don't even go to the playoffs, for instance, then the fact that everyone's so close means we're going to be right down to the wire. And I have no idea what's happening this week, but it appears to be a druid week. Something I sends terror into my heart just having to say it. Uh, this is a druid mirror, as you can see. Let's have a look at the lineups. Um, X Hope has brought Plot Twist Warlock, which has been banned. Um, quite interesting that one for me. Uh, he's playing the Egg Warrior, he's playing a Demon Hunter, and he's playing Druid. His Demon Hunter is a bit interesting. We'll get to that if he gets to play it later. She's hoping he doesn't. He hope he gets to go through three Druid games and that's it. But yeah, he's playing a Mana Burn in there instead of an Eye Beam, basically. Uh, Ding is playing the Priest. He's got his Demon Hunter banned. Also playing Warrior. He's playing the Tolvia version. And this Druid deck. These are still Spell Druids with Isira thrown in. Haven't reached the mark of the Dragon Druids yet, which I'm sure will come as time goes by. I haven't looked ahead, but I'm trying to keep everything fresh to myself as it comes along. And the Ding has just drawn the stuff. The Druid Mirror, I think he gets a bad reputation for being about who plays the first Glowfly Swarm. But certainly playing the first Glowfly Swarm is a good thing to do. But if your opponent can kill one or two of them and make a bigger Glowfly Swarm of their own, the game can level up. But yeah, certainly I want to be the person playing the first swarm. And I'm not going to beat about the bush on that one. Um, having just done exactly that. X Hope, though, is getting a chance to get ahead of mana, but he hasn't got any cards that do anything. Like, with no fungal fortunes and no real card draw to speak of, apart from, I mean, the rising winds, but that's so slow. The Ding's in a position here that he's just got a wealth of riches to worry about and he's just got to do the thing I was talking about get that first glowfly swarm it's a big one and see if X Hope can recover uh, Ding does have a plan B here well he has plan A2 which is put soul of the forest on these I think with no backup plan with no savage raw in hand I'm not sure I like this, but he does get to follow up with Fungal Fortunes straight away. It means that he's always going to be first. X-Hope had already ramped up, so it stops X-Hope going first. It acts as a defensive measure as much as anything. Yeah, it's fine. But it's a little bit all-in. Double Overgrowth will make sure that the Ding does get to the Magical 7. Fungal Fortunes after that. And it should be okay, but as you can see, it's not a game-winning push just yet. Another decision to make here. Can Soul of the Forest these? Prefer this though. Catching up while well, going ahead on mana and giving X Hope plenty of things to worry about whilst he proceeds to just fungal fortunes next turn, and then knock himself out the turn after really probably get an overflow from there draw a load of cards play the mount seller and X hope will likely be lower on cards just because he's had to deal with all this nonsense interesting that he's had to savage draw here it wasn't urgent to kill off that 2-2 he'd much rather have done something else but there's nothing else he can do his hand is just awful like I'm talking about what I would do in Ding's position here, but I think Ding can just do what he likes. Yeah, X-Hope's like, what? You got this as well? But of course he has. This is how Druid works. Usually, X-Hope is the one who hasn't got the hand, rather than Ding being the one who has got the hand. 
let's face it. But Ding... <laughs> I mean, he should win this game of Hearthstone. He's got enough going on, but somehow... Despite the fact he's got all the ramp and all the card draw, nothing's... He's winning by virtue of the fact that X-Hope has nothing. Not because he actually has anything of his own. Yeah, X-Hope... There's a, there's a play here he can make where he just makes the Power of the Wilds as minions. Gives them taunt. Maybe blows up an opposing 3-5 and just hopes upon hope to draw overflow next turn. And that might sound rubbish, but he's so far behind. I mean, he remember, we can see that Ding has somehow managed to whiff with a six-card hand. But that's so incredibly unlikely. And the only question really is how all in X hopes should go. But now he's got this far. If he keeps those two cards back in hand, he is playing to amount seller out as well as overflow out. So he may want to do that. When people talk about playing to your out, this is this is the bit where it's difficult. Playing to your one card Deathwing, anyone can do that. But this is playing to how many cards do I want to have as op options to draw me out of it. And I still want to make sure they're good if they do. So he sort of split the difference a little bit here, but the question is... How good is that Iron Bar if you do get a Mount Seller? Well, it's pretty damn good, but it's not anything particularly special. So he decides that the combination of not being likely to get the Mount Seller, plus the fact it doesn't make that much difference, plus staying alive to try and get there. And I, I quite like this. A lot of the most interesting decisions to watch, in particular in Hearthstone, and to discuss come from situations where one side is a long way in front. You know, it's, if you've got an Edwin in your hand and you've got a backstab and your opponent has a 2-2 two -two, and you've got a coin, you just backstab the 2-2, two -two, play the coin, play an Edwin, like, yeah, that's sometimes less interesting a decision than when you're struggling and having to meet out your resources really carefully. But as you can tell, people have watched a lot of these videos and I thank those people. I am into waffle mode because I feel like this game is just completely over. And now it actually is completely over. And it's 1-0 to the ding. He puts us out of our misery. And X-Hope also out of his misery. Although he'd probably have liked to have an overflow to extend that misery. It's 1-0 to IG. Looking to go joint top of the table. Alright, so it's last hero standing and X-Hope has his Demon Hunter and his Warrior. Both of them are good in this matchup. And it's interesting to me to see the pick of the Demon Hunter. Whatever he picked, will, and assuming it wins, will get countered next, next turn. So if he plays Demon Hunter, Ding accuse the Warrior. If he plays Warrior, Ding accuse the Priest. And so being 1-0 down, actually the way the matchups are working out is really bad news. You see why the Ding has banned the Plot Twist Warlock when you work it out that way. Also a chance though, looking now how that works. Maybe Exo could have worked out Druid was going to be queued first. It is weak against the other two decks. Ding sort of using it as a throwaway deck to, to get this set up. Interesting. So last hero queue order is actually interesting. When it's conquest queue order, anybody who tells you that it can be influenced, like the result can be influenced by what you choose to do, mathematically is wrong. Queue order can matter, but it's a guessing game at best if you do try and go down that route, which is why a lot of players choose to randomise in conquest. But last hero, you can actually have a proper game plan. Talking of having a proper game plan, X-Hope. Not in the best of positions it would seem, but having the War Glaives against Druid is a massive deal. You can usually, because of the nature of Druid not playing Swipe and such like these days, the Demon Hunter can just use the War Glaives on turn 6, which is usually the turn that Druid does all its nonsense take a lot of damage to the face but clear up a lot and force through a winning 
attack. Now at the moment X-Hope quite clearly doesn't have a winning attack, but there's a lot of threes in this deck. And it should pick up a decent card here. Even a one drop would be okay, although well, not ideal. Chaos Strike, not ideal, because now the threes won't be playable. Twin Slice, still zero mana. And actually the Twin Slice nerf in this particular matchup is more of a buff. You very rarely need the 0 mana twin slice to set things up. Maybe with a Satyr on turn 3. It can speed you up against the Druid. But if you get Satyr down against Druid in any sort of circumstance, you tend to just win anyway. But Exo hasn't really put on the damage he would have liked to here. Mana Burn coming too late to be of use. Ding will still have 7 mana next turn if it's played. So I'd like to see him actually just set up the War Glaives and put 3 damage to face, personally, here. Yeah. It's just an extra turn of attack. You haven't got many turns to do the attacking. So it's 2 more damage than you would get anyway. Plus it's the 5 mana save, ready for Metamorphosis on the next turn. He's probably doing all the adding up, so... He could attack for 6 this turn, that's 15. Metamorphosis is 10 over 2 turns. Puts your opponent on 5, those same 2 turns... You've easily got five in your hand, two attacks from the War Glaives, Twin Slices, another two. For me, that makes it quite an easy loader. Obviously, there's so many other things that happen. Druid Hero Power actually generates armor, uh, such like. But I don't think the game goes long enough for you not to play your War Glaives here. So, setting up the meta, which. is a use of the mana and he's decided to save resources which means that he will get an extra attack out of the war glaives from me and, you know the first attack was only going to get two damage because he gets a three point of damage anyway interesting to see if that is relevant whether the game goes long enough for that to be a good decision also has the issue now though he's converted his hero power to the meta hero power he doesn't get any cheeky Warglaves attacks, so but that probably wasn't going to happen anyway. Where you get an extra plus one from your own hero power. But you need to be using that up now so you can get the hero power added to the Warglaves later. But this is the course of action he chose when he played the meta last turn. I feel that... Fun though it is to blast through Druid minions. This is now an all-in attack, yep. And it's worked out the same except he's done two less damage two less damage but he has an extra charge on the war glaive so if there's a mount seller comes down the third charge would get through whereas my way maybe it wouldn't it's not clear cut I think X-Hope knows it's not clear cut he's not quite sure himself either way it looks like he's going to get it done next turn although this is Sira that I've neglected to talk about is going to be irritating, to say the least. Yeah, the crystal power is going to make things super difficult, actually. So shoot the face, they go down to 11. Um weapon would be six seven eight so it's only two hits onto the Yasira. there's no lethal there though is there lethal there now five to face puts ding to eleven power up the weapon to the max you can get it to that's six have to hit Yasira twice Then kill it off with the Adept, then 6 to face. It's not doable. I don't think x -Hope could get there. Yeah, Ding's looking comfortable. He's sort of obviously aware that he's close to death, but... I can't see a way where it gets through. Doesn't mean there isn't one, of course. He attacks the Asira three times with his face. You still get three to the opposing face. That puts D 
Ding down to eight, seven with the whelp attack. Four from the adept puts it down to three. Yeah, Exodus going through all the stuff I'm going through there and just realizing it somehow doesn't work. And that's a massive deal. That's his counter deck. Well and truly beaten. Um, obviously the warrior can get this done as well. Warrior is very good against this particular druid. It did get a lot worse once the Emerald Explorer started being added. But no Emerald Explorer here. So warrior is still very good here. But the difference now is the ding just has the priest option. As well as a 50-50 shot. Whereas the original lineup, as I was talking about at the start of game number two he wouldn't have had that stop gap should the priest fail but still looking good even if he loses this game uh, if he wins it of course he gets that 3-0 win and IG will move to 6-4 and four, which would put them joint to the top of the table every place matters uh, I haven't gone through it for a while I don't think so the top two in the league at the end of the nine weeks will go straight into the quarter uh, the semi-finals and then the next four teams will play off for the other two slots in those semi-finals. And I say semi-finals, but I think it's a double elimination stage, that top four. So it's, it's deeper than semi-finals. Chinese Hearthstone's always been very convoluted, but it means you get a big sample size and a lot bigger chance of the better team or player coming out on top. So yeah, I think it's those four get to play double limb to get to that double limb the third to sixth in the division have to play off a single elimination to get in there that's going to be the brutal phase i guess the really yeah you don't want to be in that group and then seventh and eighth don't even get in the playoffs they just go home you did bad come back for season two and i know we're only halfway through season one but i'm really looking forward to season two as well i uh, just now we're getting familiar with some of the places, or in some cases, re-familiar. Uh, getting to see how some players have improved since we last caught a glimpse of them. Players like X-Hope, for instance. In fact, the whole of LP with uh, Trunks and Omega Zero. A bit like a blast from the past, but Trunks in particular has impressed me. Just because we don't get to see the players so often doesn't mean they have vanished. Back to the board state, as I'm sure that some of you would like to hear about that. Well, Ding putting up this modicum of resistance, but this is why Warrior is so good against Druid. Uh, in a minute there'll be a Risky Skipper available, and as long as X-Hope is sensible and gets himself some more one drops, he is playing the green skin version, so might need both swings with the anchor to make sure he gets a cheap enough hand. Green skin's fantastic and all that, but you know it's, it's not very good with a risky skipper. It's just really good with your weapon and doing damage. Ding just destroyed something there. He's being attacked, but Ding already in a heap of trouble here. This egg alone is just. Absolute nonsense. When when the warrior does this, it beats basically anything unless it gets sapped by rogue or something, um, or or sometimes the mirror. Five five egg, just so tough to deal with. But the reason I'm not like screaming and shouting about it is that the warrior has so many good ways to win this. It can it can slow the the druid down for a slower victory, or it can just do what he did there, make a giant egg and look at, look at Ding's hand, it's it's got a chance because we just saw last game what Azira can do, and that last game was sort of out of nowhere, but X-Hope's marching to a good spot here, I, I think there's a decision to make here as to whether you just want to play Bomb Wrangler with some skippers, you're not scared of Glowfly Swarm anymore, we, yeah, yeah, things can happen. The fungal fortunes into Glowfly would be mighty irritating. But you can just skip a Wrangler, skip a... Or skip a, skip a Wrangler. And get some bombs onto that empty face. Because otherwise you're doing very little this turn. And you just see what happens if the Ding can play Isira. When it looks hopeless. So I'd like to see some bombs generated here. How many is the other question? 
is sort of the safety first approach, which you can't criticize. Gives some glowfly protection, gives a chance of armor protection. But I think it was important to get some damage onto the board there. Now, this is the like the downside of the decision he just made. Now, the follow-up is now awkward because you have a, a risky skipper in play that hurts your own stuff. And you haven't drawn Battle Rage. It's a bit silly of Exo, you definitely should have drawn Battle Rage. But pretty close to just lethaling here. One decent turn should cut it. One of the, the things when playing against Sincera that it's worth remembering is on its own, almost none of the dragons have taunt. I should know the number, I don't, but it it could even be zero. I don't think it is zero, but it's it's close to zero. It doesn't happen. You're more scared of Alex Strauss and things. But obviously, we saw last game the Iron Bark can be a deal. I'd like to see him play the Brute here just for the amount of attack on board. Having a 5 attack minion on board is just good. I think I'd like to see him stop there. This would have been my play. It's always nice sometimes to see the top players in the world do what I would do. Uh, ding now. What sort of dragons is he going to make? Nothing of use there. And it looks like the, the reign of Ding's Druid is, is going to come to an end. But then he gets to play his priest. And I've said a few, I haven't said it for a week or two, I don't think, but... Priest versus Warrior, in some ways, is the essence of this meta game. Especially in the last Hero Standing. The Priest is favoured, it's not gigantically favoured, uh, but at this level at least, I think on ladder the Priest is massively favoured from a semi-experienced Priest level. So there's no actual lethal. Would need bombs to go face for five to deliver lethal. Wait. Of course, their cash seems good though. Get live wire lance. And he has time. There's there's no lethal really coming. So what do you kill? Do you go face or do you kill off the Asira? Do you try and stop? Yeah, but Exo's been presented with some really tough situations, actually, in these games. Yeah, I think this is correct, hitting the face. And... He's looking for some extra damage there. But this... Gives him many, not just the lethal from the cork, and not just the lethal from weapon and attacks, but also outs with bomb lethals and stuff. Ding's not impressed at all with that particular draw. But I think if we're moaning about draws today, Exo also has a right to be crying. So Ding now has his priest, followed by a mirror match. So he's still in a fantastic position. To add to those achievements, you see all the achievements X Hope has there. None of which I understand, apart from I think that the lightning strike might be a 3 0 victory. Maybe. Because Lee from RNG has two of them, or had two of them, before playing against Lion. And he had a lightning strike that was purple, which looks like level 2. Of course, everything else seems to be blue, and we see the occasional purple. And we'll find out later in the week because he won that one 3 0 as well. So we're going to see what happens after Purple Lightning Strike. Right, it's the Priest versus the Warrior, and the Warrior has to make decisions quite early whether to go full combo, partly combo, or whatever. But this one, 
I'm not sure how we go about setting it up, but when you've got a War More Challenger and a Rampage, you, you tend to be looking at trying to get it done with the Challenger. Because it gets the four attack and a large number of health, Priest has a very tough time dealing with it, and that gives you a chance to get your Blood Swarm Mercenaries to copy it, and Priest also has another hard time dealing with it. Time Rip, therefore, is a really good backup plan. And you can actually get away as a priest without having some of the more good traditional removal because the warrior is going to have to assume you have it. So Time Rip is the one that they, the warrior kind of plays around. Sorry, kind of doesn't play around. Hopes you don't have. So that's the one you want to have. Dingo is choosing to try and get the Seth X stuck to the board early. If the priest sticks a minion, it tends to win the game. Yeah, this is bad, don't forget. This comes back as a 110. When it dies. It doesn't come back as a 1-4. But obviously, the reason X hopes crying here, or he's not crying at all, the reason he's, you know, upset that his opponent played cards is because this is a big deal because of Apotheosis. The warrior cannot deal with whatever it would be. Apotheosis Warmall, 313. Cannot deal with it, and that lifesteal just wins the game. But the good news for X-Hope, and something he's recognised here in how he's played this, is even if there is an apotheosis, and the very good news for him is there isn't, it's not so relevant at the start of the game. The priest isn't gaining any health. The reason it's so important is the warrior, though it might not feel like it, does have limited resources. And it will use a lot of those limited resources to try and set up a combo kill. Maybe it will be out of board, but your opponent will be on 12, and you're hoping to play a grow match in a rage, for instance. A million variations of that theme. This, this is not a straightforward matchup to describe. But if your opponent gets Apotheosis down when you've sort of gone down the route and done all the hard work and got the damage done, and then they heal up 6, 9 damage, something like that, not only have they undone your hard work, but you don't have the resources as warrior to fight back an extra time. You've usually exhausted your supplies. And that's where the battle rages come in. But even then, you can see the priest sometimes will run the warrior out of stuff. Although it doesn't usually end like that. It usually ends with the warrior no longer being able to contest the board, saving up for one last push, and the priest getting a big taunt plus a fairly wide board and just winning in two turns. Definitely want to be pushing these weapons to face, I think. Getting Ankar first to try and rip green screen out of your deck and then playing Livewire Lance would be the way I would go about it. The problem is, even the regular Priest Hero Power is a fairly big deal when you're only hitting into it for two or three with your weapons. It, it's sort of overlooked in all the mayhem. A lot of Hero Powers are, but... Just normal priest hero power here, it's really irritating, and we may just see X-Hope choose to get rid of this while he can. Okay, I prefer this by a long shot. Trying to have another go with the challenger. Oh, Solmo is lovely for Ding, he reacts to every card, and I haven't quite got a gauge on his emotions yet, but Solmo is fantastic for him. Uh, it will just give him that extra breathing space later on. Not quite as good against Warrior as against a lot of decks because a lot of the Warrior cards at least begin with more health than they have attack. But after some skipper action, you quite often end with Solmo being okay. Also means if the Warrior is not killing you, you get your own armor smiths and such like with Solmo. And having a 1 3 armor smith that's attacked to your opposing armor smith and you've just gained 6 armor and. You can put Apotheosis on that if it's not killed. Yeah, all these good things for Ding can happen. Okay, X-Hope with the pickup of Grom means that at any point he's got the option to do 10 damage with Risky Skipper Gromash. At the moment that is not a relevant factor at all. He needs to deal with what he's looking at right now. Third Risky Skipper is a big deal. 
It's amazing how often you require exactly three in the course of a game instead of exactly two. Many games have been won by Sky Raiding into Skip as a, a final throw of the dice. So just doing what he can here, but not able to get down a, a brute or anything. Yeah, Ding's getting frantic because he thinks he's going to get a uh, battle rage here because this looks like a battle rage sort of play, but this is just a desperation trying to do something play. He's generated a 211. He's cleared up some of the board. It's fine from X Hope, but nothing like the Ding was feeling. Look at now the intensity on the Ding. He's like, okay, where's all the stuff that I expected to happen here? Where's your 5 8? Massive monster, where's your five cards drawn? You did all that just to generate a 211 and kill some stuff? Sure, let's do this. Oh, that's a good bomb as well for the ding. Ah, I guess it doesn't matter actually, because he was going to time rip, so maybe it's not a good bomb. Maybe if he's going to time rip, he should have done that first, in fact. Going to play Kronks, mainly for the body here. Having the Galakron is alright, but sometimes best just to preserve your hero power as priest, just depending on the board state. Those recursive heals are actually really irritating. Because where Ding sat, he's got to protect against, I think 22 is the magic number I tend to quote, but in reality you can get away with significantly less than that, and what you call significantly, I don't know, 18 is a very unsafe number. Which is a Corcoran Elite plus Inner Age plus Rampage plus a Mercenaries. That might sound convoluted, but a lot of cards sit in x Hope's hand. Three of those cards have been there for a long time. I remember announcing the Grom being drawn what, two turns ago. The weapon was there a long time ago, because the Ankar was played as a choice. And the Risky Skippers, I think, has been there from the start. So Ding will be just getting a little bit aware of the fact that he could face a large chunky attack anytime so he just plays a 6-6 six, six down try and take control of the board and maybe I mean you can just win the game like Exo hasn't had one of these starts where he plays an armor smith sometimes you play an armor smith just to get some board control and tick up some armor in the process that's not happened what has happened in fact is Exo is struggling mightily for health but has finally after two or three very accurate looking turns to me got himself into a position where he has some semblance of board and there may never be a better soul mirror than this it's a little sad and will return both war walls to the owner's hands Okay, this is this is actually better, yeah. You don't want to give the one more back to Hex Hope. Hope. Using up those resources is a big ish deal, but when when you post down to three, Galacon will get rid of some, Time Rip will get rid of some. And of course, Hex Hope. Another painful blow there. Not getting the cards in the right order at all today. Battle Rage, he's needed for so long in this game. So I think we'll probably see him play the face of Lackey and just see if he gets a minion with two or more health. And if he. Oh, maybe he has to gamble actually. He wants to injure things with a skipper and can't. It's actually a horrible situation. Maybe he'd be better off waiting a turn here. Nah. I don't even know at that point. What I do know is the Ding has a nice looking hand. He can, if he wants to clear the board with Galakond and Swampoos.
but this does look better to me. This says you're never getting the board again, and I don't think you can kill me this turn. You see now, though, why they have to be so careful as a priest. Exo can put three to face there and twelve from the Grom, and suddenly the ding would be on eight. So there is this constant battle when you're the priest, you know, of, I might be dead very soon. If one of those cards was a rampage and on a battle rage, that's another three, maybe you're on five. So I think Ding will be paying very close attention to not only maintaining his health, but also just getting rid of X-Hope as quickly as possible here. So X-Hope trying to work out how many cards to draw, because this hand is doing nothing. Sadly for him, he can't play the Skipper and the Grom. Can he make a board where he plays the Grom? Yeah, I like this again. And takes a chance to get the cards. Yep. This just makes sense, and... He knows he's in trouble, but... As seems to have been the theme of the broadcast... He's trying to make something out of what he's got, at least. Armour Smith is handy. Is it handy immediately? Yes. And that should put the ding absolutely safe. Yep. And again, gets to 25, feels that he's comfortable, and so sets about occupying the board. Minions are removal spells in control decks. But in two turns, they will have removed X Hope's face, so they are doing double duty here. Ding's bored. He's swiveling around on his chair, just waiting for it to end. IG about to go top of the leaderboard alongside VK. It's amazing to me that after 10 matches, 6 and 4 is good enough to be top of the leaderboard. That's like just not possible. We've definitely seen differences between the teams as well. I, I feel that some teams are flattered by their current standings and some are not, but it is amazing that there's 3 wins between first and last. And Liquid have 2 games in hand, so... That will probably, unless Liquid have a nightmare week, that might come down to two games between first and last at the end of week five. And the phrase, it's a marathon, not a sprint, may just turn into, it's a sprint for the line by the end of this week. Uh, the pack has not split at all. VK, though, still looking pretty. They, they started off incredibly strongly, and they're still six and three. And Lion has another match to play this week. So a very good chance of going to 7 and 3. Looking for those top two spots. But Ding is not looking for those top two spots right now. He's just looking to get this job finished. Just trying to be safe with his health total. At some point, I think he has Galakon as, as the final sort of extra five health. That'll be played the turn or two before he wins, just to just to end it all. So X Hope here. I, I mean what he wants to do is lackey up the Bomb Wrangler. But whichever whatever he hits with Titanic Lackey is just going to be feel like a bit of a waste in some way because it's just going to get removed with time rip and he knows this so instead decides to just use it as health gain on the egg also actually forces the ding to give him something that he can attack back with because he doesn't have that at the moment and we saw earlier he managed to generate a board over two turns this is where these top players are separated from very good players. The ability to see two or three turns ahead, not the obvious stuff that we can all do, but 
how the board will probably look in three turns time uh, if you make certain decisions that don't look like they have an immediate large impact. But he has been largely going uphill today, X Hope, and it is looking like that's going to be the end of the line for today. And LP, despite me talking about them quite in quite glowing terms, are going to be four and five. Don't think they'll stay below fifty percent for long, but definitely dangerous down there. Again, it's still very close, but I feel like Opley have been doing pretty well, playing good Hearthstone. And the Ding's probably wondering what's taking X-Hope so long every turn, but, you know, it's, it's because X-Hope has never had anything easy. He's never had anything that looks like he's going to win. But he's always had options. And he's found things to do with those options that have kept this game interesting. I think most people would have lost as the Warrior some time ago here. So Exo building up for one huge effort by the look of it. Looks like next turn he's going to try and get a, a free brawler down. A free brute down. I mean, he's only even in this because Apotheosis hasn't happened. Ah. Uh. Oh. Okay. I think I've gone for Apotheosis, but whatever. I understand this, it's just... Apotheosis, I think, means you never lose. I think you never lose anyway. You can take what you want. I think Ding's been bored for some time now. must be nice to be able to be in a position so strong that in the Gold Team Championship you can actually be bored whilst playing. Maybe he's just excited. His first match didn't go too well, so... Just maybe relief rather than boredom, I guess. But he looks bored to me. Just wants to get out of there. Well, X hope You've been saving up for one big push. This involves bombs, skippers, and automobiles, I think. I can't see how it works out, but let's have a look. I think he's found a way to at least stay alive. He's got to hit the right one, obviously. He doesn't want to generate more. Yeah, this, this is what he's been working towards for some time. But he's also going to run out of time if he's not careful, which would be a shame, because how many bombs has he managed to get going here? He's done some. He's done all the hard work. What a superb turn that he's played towards yet again. Exo showing his class in this phase of the tournament. Soul mirror that I was talking about earlier and realised that maybe it wouldn't get a good use is going to find a good use. And then there's the water bearer afterwards to heal back up. So is there anything better than that? Time rip one of them. I don't know if time it would get him um, a level 3 Galakon to get the weapon with. Okay, good. Starting to wonder if I was missing something. But he is just playing his due diligence to the situation. Yeah, X-Hope's had enough of that. Ding gets his win. It's the thumbs up from the Ding.